I'm going to start with uh, employers training resource and we're going to go from there. Uh, this is the list of our uh, current Inyo and Mono County work, uh, Workforce and Innovation and Opportunity Act partners. Again, I had mentioned we have 20 partners, so if you can see all those different agencies on there, there's multiple, and some of them you may or may not be familiar with. We have a few new partners. Uh, the California Indian Manpower Consortium, they have a representative now available at the Southeast um, America's Job Center office. Uh, we have the SIRS for Progress um, that is a new to us. I think it's been around for a while, but they're a newer agency. Uh, the Housing Authority is now included. Um, trying to see, we have Mono County, which is one of our outside uh, locations, Inyo County. Um, Kern, uh, Community Action Partnership of Kern is a new partner. They've been a partner of ours for years, but not an official partner. They are now. And then Delano Joint Unified School District. The others you guys probably recognize. So you may know a little bit of information about each of these agencies. But eventually, we hope to have this type of cross-training to be available to you so that you will learn all about their agencies and what they offer to both our youth population, our adult population, our farm worker population, and all the different things that we, and the different grants that we all offer in the, the community. So we'll get familiar with that. Yeah, excuse me. Okay, these are our locations of our uh, one-stop centers. Our comprehensive centers are in Bakersfield, Delano, and Ridgecrest. And those centers actually offer all services for AJCC enrollment and programs. So if you want to send someone to get more details about exactly what all of us provide, those are the three locations that are required to do so. The affiliate offices are in different locations and there will be more of those from each of these different partners. We can add their, list, uh, their locations on the list if they'd like us to, but currently we have the, our Employers Training Resource has the Back to Work Center, which is a new location that is specific to working with employers and business community, as well as, uh, and that's in, located in the uh, commercial district, down to, uh, off of Truxton and Commercial Way. Uh, we have our Oildale office, which is an affiliate office that is, that is kind of a uh, location where a lot of our farm worker, it's the uh, staff that work with our farm worker community work at that location but they also hold a lot of recruitments and things there too. So there's a couple of different locations that Employers Training Resource has. Some of the, uh, Lake Isabella is another one. Uh, they're outside the area, but we have a small staff, Donna here, uh, that offers assistance up there. And she is kind of a, a one-man show up there, but she does a fantastic job. And we have a lot of community involvement with Donna being and participating in that, up there in that location. Uh, Lamont, Mojave, Shafter, Taft, those are our partner offices with the Department of Human Services. Uh, they have resource rooms in those locations that are available to customers that need to come in. They're looking for employment, looking for education information, et cetera. Their use, that, that space is available for them. And then um, our Inyo and Mono County offices are uh, also available for people in those locations. So this is some of our funding streams with Employers Training Resource. Um, and that changes kind of every year. Some things change and some things don't. Our main federal grant is with the Workforce Inno Innovation and Opportunity Act. And that covers adult, dislocated worker, and youth. And those are pretty regular grants that we typically get every year without having to compete for those. The Department of Labor grants would be the National Farm Worker Jobs Program. That is a uh, competitive grant that we go out for. I think that we, right now it's a three-year grant. Um, but it is uh, funded every year, and then we work with the, at the farm worker community here. And if everyone is very familiar with Bakersfield and the Kern County area, we have lots of farm workers to work with. So we help them find employment, different training opportunities if they would like to get out of the field. Uh, we have state grants, uh, the La Cooperativa grant, uh, the National Emergency Grant, Public Safety Alignment Grant, uh, which is those that are uh, coming out of prison, those that are getting out early release. We help with them and, and we have staff that are specific to working with that group. We have a Disability Employment Accelerator Grant, which is new to us this year. And that is for people that, are, um, that have some disability but are looking to find employment and they just need some opportunities and some assistance with that process. Uh, we also have county grants. Again, the uh, AB 109 is also a county structured grant. And then we have CalWORKs and we have PWECs, um, which come through the Department of Human Services. And those are programs where we're actually helping people um, get back to work and have opportunities to go and have a work experience opportunity so that they can learn to be someone that's on the job before they go out and, and get referred out to employers directly. So that's where our funding starts. 
And then we have job seeker services. As a, uh, America's Job Center, we have an orientation um, that happens every mo Monday through Thursday at 9.30 in the morning at our location, another one at our Oildale location, that lets the customers know exactly what we do, what we have to offer. We share information about all of our partners. If the partners want to add to that orientation, they're welcome to let us know and we can do that. We have some that come in and they just speak quickly and talk about their programs and services. And then we have a PowerPoint and formal information that's available to them as well as handouts. So if you want more information to be provided at these orientations, please let me know and we can make that happen. So the structure of our job seeker services is we have a staff assisted job search. I'm sorry, uh, self assisted. Self assisted is people can come in and use the center. They can go to our, our recruitments. They can go to our job squad. They can use our services online. They can go to our Facebook page and they can come in and they can use our resource rooms um, for doing their own job search um, and doing uh, checking, you know, using the internet access, telephone, fax machine, whatever they need to do in order to um, you know, contact employers and start getting referred out. And then they can also come to workshops as well. So we have agencies in the, in the building that provide different workshops. So people that come in and do it on their own, they're allowed to do that without any staff assistance. With employers training resource, then we have a staff assisted job services. And that's where they come in and they want to do a little bit more. They need a little bit more assistance. They, want, they need to get enrolled in the, in the program. Um, we have requirements for some of that. We have eligibility requirements to enroll. Uh, we have a job search class for someone that is already has some job skills and they've worked before, so they just need a little refresher on getting their resume up to date, getting a little more comfortable with interviews again, um, you know, getting online and looking at job openings, that kind of stuff is available in a four-day job search class. So we have that available every week. And then we also offer uh, work experience opportunities. And then beyond that, we have training opportunities. And for those that actually don't have any job skills um, or lack job skills in an area where there's actual job opportunities in the community, they can come in and get retrained. So that's an assessment that gets taken care of at our intake process with staff and they go and they have to take an assessment with a work keys testing and a career pathways assessment to find out what skills they have, where's the best you know, thing for them to do and where are the job opportunities in the community at this time. So they must meet different requirements for those training opportunities, but the training also off, um, allows for on-the-job training. So if someone has job skills and they have an employer that's willing to hire them and actually provide them uh, a job opportunity, that's where we can go and we can actually just put them straight on the job. If the employer is willing to do that, we can enroll them and we can assist them through that process and help pay the employer to train you. So that's a, a, a great opportunity for or for job seekers to come in, get enrolled, and then find a new opportunity with an employer that's hiring. So these are some of the employer services. Uh, we have services uh, where we post job openings for employers at the state required job posting system, which is CalJobs. You can see caljobs.ca.gov is where we post all of our positions. And we find a way to communicate that with all of our different partners that are in the One Stop Center so that when someone comes into the front desk, they ask for a certain position, we have a way to locate that, we have a staff person assigned there, we can send them directly to the right person because we have multiple people in the building, we need to make that system work correctly that way. So we refer them, we pre-screen for employers, uh, we help them do interviews, we hold on-site recruitments, which we often do, and we've had quite a few. Uh, today we had two large recruitments going on at the Southeast office for Dollar General, and Chipotle, and the place was huge and super busy. Yesterday, our oil to office had one for uh, Caltrans, and we have uh, had over 550 people there uh, for Caltrans, Caltrans positions. So multiple employers, uh, they're finding out about our recruitments. They really like using the, the um, offices and the staff that help them. They said, the, the, uh, I heard this morning, the Caltrans said the recruitment at our oil office is one of the best that they've done and they've been doing them throughout the state because it's a state program and they're trying to let people know about the great opportunities with Caltrans because they're having 54% people are going to be retiring soon. So they really have a need. They know they're behind the, they're behind the, the, uh, the clock that they should have already been starting. So if you hear about people looking for positions that Caltrans is uh, hiring for, please direct them to their website. Um, they would be thrilled for us to send more people. Um, 
We have the facilities that employers can use. You can use any of our centers and you can hold, you know, training like this for employers. You can do orientations. They can do um, interviews on site. They can do orientation processes with them. They can do testing. Uh, we have computers that are available if they need to do online testing. All that stuff is available. So, and then we have, again, financial incentives with the on-the-job training and work experience opportunities. So an employer that might need extra assistance in their, in their uh, business, but they don't really have the funds to hire someone right now, it could be a work experience opportunity site. So we work with our partners to help set that up. And then they have work opportunity tax credits. We help with layoff aversion and labor market information. So employers that need more information about you know, how they should re redirect their business, um, they can go and they can ask staff for labor market information and things like that that can help them. So some of our employer services. And then here are some of the general eligibility requirements for our programs. We have uh, programs for adult, dislocated workers, seasonal, farm work, seasonal migrant farm workers, and then we have our youth. And we have two separate sets of youth. youth. We have in-school youth and we have out-of-school youth. And they're a little bit different. They're handled differently under WIOA. Those things have changed a little bit. So our in-school youth, um, they have to meet low income and barriers and then 25% of the funding allowed to be able to use for in-school youth. And that's between the ages of 14 and 21, which typically many of those, uh, that age group are still in high school. So they're not falling out yet. So the ones that we spend more money on are the ones that are out of school youth that are needing a little bit more assistance. They need to have a little more direction. If they've come out of school and they're not working yet, um, they, they have barriers, but they don't have to have low income anymore. Um, but they do have to, we spend 75% of our funding for our youth is spent on the out of school older youth. So, um, and then our veterans, of course, in any grant, they fit in all of them, uh, but they do get priority. So anytime we have a veteran in the building, uh, let us know. We have staff that are specific. Our partners have certain programs for them. Um, and we have staff that are, you know, the veterans are kind of close to their hearts, so they like to make sure that they get really, really good handheld through the process, so. And then here are some of our performance measures. So each of our grants that we get, we have, a requirement to do things with that with the customers that are put through those grants and this is some of the programs that we have adult and dislocated worker and the national farm worker jobs program um, we must meet employment rates and we must meet median earnings and credential attainment so those are things that we as uh, staff as we're working with the customers we know when we're enrolling them from the very beginning we have to assess them and make sure that there's someone that has potential to do and find employment and or get, you know, get their training and move on. Um, you know, if someone comes in and they're really not motivated to do anything, it's really gonna be hard on the rest of us in the end because we have to meet these, these performances. So um, our youth are measured differently. We have employment and placement and training and if they're, or in education, um, again, median earnings, and then they have credential attainment as well. So you can see what's listed behind me. Those things are passed out on a card to all of our staff. So when they're working with these customers and they know uh, what the requirements are for each of the customers that are sitting at their desk, they know how hard they have to work to get them employed or get them back to school. So this is a card I just mentioned. It's a duplicate here, but um, we pass these out again to all of our staff so they know each day when they come in, this is, is posted on their wall in their cubicles or their offices that they know what their goals are, okay? This is, and it's all listed. Each year, we get a different set of numbers. We have percentages that we have to meet. So the adult um, measures at the top, 63% employment rate um, after certain, after the second quarter it has to be 61, after the fourth quarter. So we follow our customers for a year to a year and a half after they've been, uh, they've obtained employment. So it's not just a come in, get your stuff, get out and move on. We actually make sure that they stay employed. That's, that's kind of our goal. So, so this was um, the basic career services I had mentioned already that they don't, when people come in, they don't need an appointment. They can come in and use the services at any time, um, go through the different things, the uh, individual career services. This is the new terminology under WIOA. But basically the same thing, they, they have to come in and get assessed if they're going to go through different programs uh, and work with staff. And then these are the training opportunities. And I just 
grab some of the slides for the different training programs that we have, that we offer. So we have um, in our clusters, we have certain clusters in our community where we try to focus a lot of our job opportunities and work with employers because that's kind of our, our workforce in this community is these are the targeted areas. So logistics and manufacturing, we have a lot of logistics and manufacturing here. So we have people that can go into welding programs, uh, manufacturing, forklift certification, truck drivers in order to fill positions in this cluster. So uh, healthcare, again, huge in our community, nurse assistant, medical billing, registered nurse, etc. And I know some of these are programs that take a lot longer and they're a lot more costly, but we help people get started in them and then we help them actually, if they've already come in as a CNA, we can help them bump into a, an LVN position and, and further on. So there's great opportunities for people that are you know, trying to advance themselves in careers. So. And then we have public sector infrastructure, which is construction, which is, <laughs> we have a lot, of, um, a lot of roads and things going on right now. As Caltrans shared yesterday, we have a lot of uh, funding coming into the Central Valley to work on roads and advance the roads and opportunities here. So we have things in those areas as well. And then energy and natural resources. Um, although we have had a downturn in our oil lately, we do have a lot of solar here. We have a lot of wind. Um, so we have a lot of things that are opportunities for people that they can get into if they haven't already um, focused themselves. And then some additional things in different programs that people want to take. Just let me look for a second. And then the work experience, I mentioned already um, how that works. And they have, to, they have some requirements that they come in and then there's some opportunities and our partners that we work with that establish the work experience sites will help connect the person to the employer for the best fit for them. And the job search class I went over already, just a little bit more information, how to sell yourself in an interview, um, find out who, how, the, uh, how the internet works and how you can connect with the employers that are actually hiring, et cetera. And here's some workshops and job forums that we offer. We have a resume and interview workshop Wednesdays from 1.30 to 3.30. A job squad is on Thursday mornings. We get lots of people coming in to listen to that, find out what new opportunities you have. And then on uh, Mondays, which is recent, uh, we just recently combined this into a technology, image, and social media workshop. And it's a very um, sought out workshop that we have a lot of people that are interested in finding out. How do I use social media? Everyone's really into the internet and the social media, the smartphones, et cetera. They are using these workshops to come in and get more information about that and find out so it's something that we send a lot of people to and all of our staff, all of our partners have worked together and we have staff that rotate from different partners that come in and offer this training. So everyone in this room could come in and teach this class. We have them ready for you. And then here's just some things where you can find us, America's Job Center of Kern. Uh, find us at our Facebook page. We also have our TV announcements if you haven't seen them yet, six o'clock in the morning on Tuesdays early. Um, <laughs> On uh, KGET Channel 17, we announce our hot jobs there and our different events and activities that are happening, like the big recruitments. We make sure that those are being announced um, on our job corner. And then also at our website, we have a YouTube um, channel that you can actually click on from our website and get more information about anything that's going on. And these different trainings that are going on today, you'll be able to look at them and listen to the different presentations if you're not able to attend these workshops. So this is our... Facebook page, I mean our website and different things that are listed on here. We have a calendar of events. An email blast goes out. If you don't watch it every time, we can actually remind you to watch. Um, our job corner, the, again, the uh, recruitments and job fairs that are announced, different events, and then our Facebook page. So that's where you can find us. So anybody have any questions? I go over everything too quickly. 